morning everyone my name is lalit soni and you are watching drishti ies in this live session we will be talking about our indian express newspaper as usual we will be going through a few important articles since it was weekend we could not come live so we will be discussing important article from saturday and sunday as well okay but uh, as you must have seen the newspaper most of the news are election related so we will not dwell deep into those uh, particular news we will talk about certain events which has happened uh, like uh, when we are talking about the israel uh, israel and iran issue we will talk about that other than that few things we will be talking about that is brahmos to philippines so there was this agreement in which india will be giving brahmos missile to philippines in south china sea so first delivery has happened so we will be talking about that then global mass coral bleaching okay when we are talking about this corals you must have idea what are corals otherwise we will be talking about that but the thing is when we are talking about uh, this particular coral uh, coral coral bleaching sorry uh, so when we are talking about this coral bleaching so there is this global mass bleaching which is happening okay so this is not the first time it is happening but it has happened earlier as well but now because of the anthropogenic activities it is happening again so we'll be talking about that what are the reason behind it and how it will stop all these things we'll be talking about okay then further we'll be talking about climate litigation in india so basically we have talked about a judgment wherein a fundamental right has been added to article 21 that is a right against the effects of climate change okay so because of that particular right it is uh, speculated that there can be increase in the litigation in india okay when we are talking about the environment related litigations there are litigation which are related to environment that is uh, that is right to health or uh, you know right against the pollution or you can say right to have a clean air etc but the thing is here we are particularly talking about the climate related or climate change related litigations okay per se there was not such provision but now that has been added so obviously that litigation will increase so we will talk about that as well from around the world as i told you israel and iran issue we will be talking about other than that we will see uh, you know because of this particular crisis what will be the impact on oil prices etc okay for your own read there will be one article which is related to your elections but it is interesting there are certain factors from science and technology or you can say some application of science uh, chemicals which has been given over there that can be very important for your prelims there are chances that they can ask you about that particular uh, chemical okay for your last part would be that practice question which we will be discussing this is today's front page here you can see that mostly news are political in nature there were some rallies then this liquor case uh, with respect to ed so this case per se is not important but the function of ed is important which we have already discussed the statute for because of which this uh, you know ed has come into picture or you can say uh, the statute from which ed derives power okay such things will be important for your prelims as well okay so let's start with our discussion before going ahead i would like to tell you that this is the last day to avail the civil services discount here we are uh, giving you 40% flat 40% discount on our all online courses pen drive courses test series as well as distance learning programs okay so you can go through this particular uh, number that is 8750187501 or 8010444040 so on this number you can make a call otherwise there will be a link in the description you can go and avail the offer again this is the last day to avail this particular offer okay now let's start with the practice question which was given to you in the previous class which of the following is most commonly used to create deep fakes okay we have talked about deep fakes again and again and again okay so this is the type of malware so this is incorrect synthetic media creator using deep learning that can be an option so we will uh, you know make sure that uh, we consider that again you cannot mark an option just because you have read the you know uh, you can say that particular statement because there are chances that uh, there can be something which is more appropriate than that okay so you have to read all the statements when you are going for the prelims okay now an error in the digital media so this is also incorrect then a type of high resolution image now they are talking about a high resolution image that image can be a deep fake or otherwise also a genuine image there can be there with the high resolution so this is also incorrect so we can say that a synthetic media created using deep learning algorithms okay we have talked about it how there is an existing video or picture then there is another you know element which is superimposed on that and that is how we create a deep fake okay so you can say this is one of the uh, you can say application of your uh, what do you call ai okay now moving further let's start with the first article that is related to a defense deal which has happened amid south china sea tensions india delivers brahmos to philippines when we are talking about the south china sea tensions we have already discussed the issue of uh, you know uh, parasal island then the issue of partly island then we have talked about 
थॉमस सोल दैट इज सेकेंड थॉमस सोल ओके अदर देन दैट ऑल्सो वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट टू थ्री यू नो इशूज दैट इज वन इज रिलेटेड टू योर ताइवान देन देर आर सम एरियाज देर इज इशू रिलेटेड टू यू कैन से एक्सक्लूसिव इकोनॉमिक जोन्स इन दैट पर्टिकुलर एरिया वैन वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट काउस टंग वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द नाइन डैश लाइन ऑल दीज थिंग्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस ओके सो इन दैट रिगार्ड दीज इशूज आर गोइंग ऑन इन द साउथ चाइना सी अदर देन दैट नाउ uh that has happened over there but still india has actually uh, supplied their first you can say uh, cargo or you can say first delivery of brahmos missile to philippines india delivered the brahmos supersonic cruise missile to philippines friday at part of a 375 million deal signed in 2022 now this deal is important for my mains point of view as well india is manufacturing things over here and india is trying to have a good impact or you can say influence in the export market okay so when we are talking about defense technology india is trying to uh, you know manufacture defense equipment in uh, you know domestically and want to export it to some countries like which are having or you can say countries of global south or otherwise small island nations okay uh, there is this uh, particular perspective or you can say narrative which says that india is the you know first responder or you know security provider in this particular region okay so that can be uh, seen in that regard as well now an iaf indian air force c17 globe master transport aircraft and a chartered aircraft delivered the missile system to the philippines marine corps okay brahmos aerospace aerospace private limited is looking to export the missile system and is compact next generation version that is brahmos ng okay so when we are talking about this brahmos we are coming up with brahmos ng new generation okay so that can be important at at least uh, 10 countries including south africa saudi arabia uae and egypt okay so these are all countries which are in our neighborhood now when we are talking about this uh, deal which has happened amid tensions with the china in south china sea so as i told you these countries like uh, vietnam uh, philippines then when we are talking about taiwan all these countries have some kind of issue with china okay here you can see the deal for the shore based variant of anti ship cruise missile market marked india's first major export order this is india's first major export order as i told you india is trying to get footholds in the export area of the defense technology the missile has a range of nearly 290 km when we are talking about this brahmos missile there are various variant which are available some are up to 400 km some are up to 290 km so that is totally a different thing okay so you don't have to remember the range for this particular shipment brahmos aerospace is a joint venture between defense uh, <coughs> defense research and development organization that is drdo and second is with russian organization that is npo masi nostro yenia okay so if you can remember the name it's okay otherwise also just remember that it is an endeavor which is between india's dardo or drdo plus russia okay <clears throat> then the the supersonic cruise missile has been operationalized in the three wings of uh, indian armed forces that is uh, but obvious now when we are talking about brahmos ng it is a next generation smaller lighter version of the weapon system which can be deployed in a range of military platforms okay so basically here they are saying that it is a better version okay so it, they are saying that it is smaller lighter okay so uh, obviously when we are going for the next generation you will be coming up with a better technology work has been underway to upgrade the range of existing brahmos missile from 290 km to 500 km for land attacks and 400 km for ship attacks when we are talking about the missile specification you can remember these specification which are given over here it is a supersonic cruise missile supersonic means that uh, the speed of this particular missile will be more than the speed of sound okay then it is a joint venture between defense research uh, and development organization that is drdo of india and npom of russia okay so th this we have already discussed please remember india and russia it is named after rivers brahmaputra and <coughs> moskva okay so you can remember these two rivers and please go ahead and watch where this particular river is flowing in russia okay this is the picture of this missile you don't have to uh, you know re remember all these facts but the thing is this particular slide can be important two states missile it is a two stage missile when we are talking about two stages they are talking about the fuel okay so there will be a uh, you know uh, solid propellant engine in the first stage and then there will be liquid ramjet in the second stage now uh, brahmos is one of the fastest cruise missile as i told you it is having uh, a supersonic speed or you can say a mac 2.8 speed that is you can say nearly three times the speed of sound it has launched weight of 2200 to 300 kg 
Bromos is equipped with sleet technology. Sleet technology helps it to actually, you can say, uh, uh, it will be out of the radar. Okay, so it will help them to hide from the uh, enemy's uh, counter attacks. Okay. So, Bromos is equipped with sleet technology designed to make it less visible to the radar and detection methods. It has inter, uh, inertial navigation system for use against the ship targets and INS uh, that is global positioning system GPS for use against the land targets. Okay, For land target they have GPS or INS then for uh, you know uh, moving targets like ship targets they have inertial navigation system that is INS. Okay, So, I hope this is clear go through these facts these two slides are quite important for you from the prelims point of view because they can ask about Brahmos. Now, coming to the second article of the day that is uh, related to your uh, as I told you mass coral bleaching. Okay, So, we will talk about coral leaves first and then we will go to the mass bleaching what is happening in uh, around the globe. So, when we are talking about the coral leaves these are organisms or you can say animals Okay, they will give you a you know picture like uh, they are plants. Okay, If you are looking at this particular thing you will get an idea that it can be a plant but actually it is an organism it is uh, a particularly you can say an animal. Okay. And when we are talking about this coral uh, reefs, they are basically live in a symbiotic relations with a algae named zooxanthellae. Okay, so please remember this name. This can be very important. Now, first we will see what coral reefs are, how they work, and then we will come to this particular portion. Okay, so for being, uh, you know, for a healthy ecosystem for a coral to survive in, or you, for a healthy habitat, there are certain conditions which should be there, like salinity that should be. Uh, 32 to 42 ppt moderate water motion should be there it should not be a water which is moving too fast okay then clear water okay why clear water because as i told you they live in a symbiotic relation with zooxanthellae and zooxanthellae are the algae which are producing food for them okay because they are performing photosynthesis they need light and if there is uh, you know lack of clear water then this photosynthesis can be hampered okay so that is why clear water is important zooxanthellae needs sunlight now, temperature range should be between 23 to 29 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that is a ten, uh, temperature in which they will survive. So, here you can see that they mostly they will be around the tropical and subtropical areas. Okay, then it is between 25 north to 25 south latitude. So, we have already discussed that. Now, this is a very uh, you can say a sensitive organism. So, when we are talking about any change in these conditions, if there is a, any change in these conditions because of which there can be coral bleaching okay or it will affect the habitat of the coral okay now here you can see this is a healthy coral okay so this is basically the arm of the coral and on which there are these zooxanthellae these are the uh, algae which we are talking about here you can see these are they having some kind of particular color and because of their color these particular reefs also get a color now, zooxanthellae need a habitat to live in or a you know place to uh, you know uh, uh, attach to or you can say live in. So, basically these zooxanthellae take these reefs or these are basically reefs are basically structure of your uh, you know carbonate structure or bicarbonate structure. Okay. So, these uh, zooxanthellae come and attach to this particular reef. They produce food. So, the nutrient required of the requirement of the coral which will be uh, taken care by the zooxanthellae and the coral reef will give the support or you can say a uh, habitat for them to live in. Okay? So, that is how it is a symbiotic relation between these two. But if any of these conditions which are changing because of which what will happen that these algae over here, here these small algae are there, these small algae they will leave the coral okay so here you can see in this picture these algae are getting out of the coral this is the coral reef and uh, this is your basically the part of the coral only now out of uh, this particular area they are getting out okay so these are the uh, zoos and flies now once all of them are out of that particular zone so you can say that now coral's color has been lost okay now it will be having a color that is uh, white or you can say that uh, uh, the carbonate structure will be there uh, that is basically bleached coral without any color color okay so that is how these coral reefs are working and when we are talking about the bleaching or when we are talking about the coral reefs dying so that is the situation wherein color they lose their colors okay so that is coral bleaching now recently it is happening because of the you know uh, rise in the oceanic temperature here we have discussed that they need a temperature surface temperature of 23 29 degrees celsius and now that temperature is rising uh, world over and that is why basically here you can see there are these problems which are happening okay hold on
So coming to the article now. Here, the fourth global mass coral bleaching event has triggered. Now they are talking about fourth. Then what were the other uh, three? We will talk about that as well. Now it has been said by U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, that is NOOA. They have come up with this particular report wherein they have said that this is what is happening right now. Okay. This could have seriously serious consequences on the ocean life. Millions of people who rely on the coral reefs for food, job, and coastal uh, coastal defences, etc. So when we are talking about this coastal defence over here, so these coral reefs are basically structure, okay, and they are uh, carbonate structure, and they are attached to the ground, okay. So when we are talking about these corals, they are attached to the ground, or you can say seabed, okay. So when they are attached to the seabed. If there is a tsunami or if there is a you know uh, because of the earthquake like situation if there are certain waves which are coming toward the shore these will act as a protective layer okay they will slow down their speed okay so that is basically coastal defense okay other than that there are you know various organisms which are relying on these particular coral corals corals are having uh, you can say uh, heaviest biodiversity okay what are corals and coral reefs which we have already seen what are corals so here but we will see corals are animals which are sessile meaning they are permanently attached themselves to the oceanic floor okay which we have discussed they use their tentacles these structure like this which are coming out branches or you can say these tentacles they use their tentacles like hands to catch food from the water and sweep it into their mouths okay so when we are talking about one particular coral that is called polyp okay so they are called as polyp now when we are talking about the groups of these thousands of po uh, polyps it is called coral okay or that is that can be also called a polyp colony okay then corals are largely classified as either hard corals or the soft corals it is hard corals that are uh, architects of the coral reefs okay so these polyps if they are moving then they are uh, you know soft corals and if they are getting this uh, you know hardness because of the carbonate structure these are basically your you can say coral reefs okay when it becomes hard then it is basically reef when a coral dies okay so they will make a structure that structure basically form the coral reefs okay now hard corals have a stony skeleton made out of limestone that are produced by the coral polyps when polyps die their skeletons are left behind and used as a foundation for the new polyps okay so these are structures of your limestone limestone are nothing but your bicarbonates okay so basically they are saying that they are structure of or you can say skeleton of uh, limestone okay what is the significance of coral these are crucial for the ecosystems there are various services which are being provided by them zoos and thalys are depending on them there are various biodiversity which is attached to it there is an economy behind it okay the crucial ecosystem thousand of marine species can be found on this uh, particular reef millions of undiscovered species are found over here Reef provide about 2.7 trillion in goods and services. Okay, goods and services. Other than that, there are various ecosystem services which are also been provided by the uh, corals. Okay, now global coral reef monitoring network they have said that this particular element that is 2.7 trillion uh, goods and services uh, worth of uh, goods and services has been provided by the corals. More than 500 million people across the world depend on the coral reefs for food, income, coastal protection, etc. They absorb up to 97% of the energy from waves, storms, floods, which I have already told you because they are attached to the ground. And if there is any, uh, you know, speedy waves which are coming in front of the, uh, you know, on the side of the coastal areas, they will try to stop them or uh, at least uh, you can say reduce their speed. Okay. So that basically prevents loss of life and the property. What is coral bleaching? I, ha I have only already uh, told you what is this coral bleaching. There is this uh, zoos and thali which is attached to the corals which uh, gives them their color and because of any kind of uh, you know change in the conditions in which coral can survive then these zoos and thali will start to leave the corals and ultimately they will be discolored that is basically coral bleaching. Okay. So this is the symbiotic relationship with the zoos and thali, a safe place to live zoos and thali are the provider of the oxygen or the organic pro uh, products of the photosynthesis and help corals to grow and thrive. These are bright and unique colors which are given to the corals okay this is very sensitive to light temperature pollution etc so all these things i have already discussed now okay <clears throat> now coral bleaching does not necessarily lead to the death of the coral it reduces the reproductivity of the corals now 
it reduces the reproductivity of the coral as I told you these reefs are the structure on which these corals are building themselves and if their reproductive capacity is reduced because of the coral bleaching. So, ultimately after some time they will start to deteriorate and they will die ok. So, that is why they are basically vulnerable. So, it makes them vul uh, more vulnerable to fatal diseases due to the lack, lack of the nutrients. If the bleaching is not too severe coral have none to recover ok. So, if bleaching is not severe they can recover as well. Now, when uh, these last three uh, incidents of mass bleaching has happened here you can say one is in 1998 nearly 20 percent of the world's coral reef has been basically uh, uh, you can say bleached at that point of time. Next two global ble bleaching events were in 2010 35 percent of the reefs were affected and then 2014 to 17 56 percent of the reefs were affected. You do not have to remember all this data, but just know that this is not the first time that mass bleaching has, is happening. Now, what is happening right now as I told you there are various countries wherein you can see uh, the temperature has increased, the sea surface temperature has increased because of the global warming or other activities uh, ok. And now that is why these corals are getting affected. Most of the effect can be seen in the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. Now, please remember this particular point because this is the area where our coral, coral, very uh, you can say very prominent structures of coral can be found over there. The Great Barrier Reef of Australia, the largest in the world, is witnessing more severe bleaching over here. Okay. Then there are you know Western Indian Ocean. Tanzania, Kenya, western coast of Indonesia, all these areas are also being seeing all these things. So, you can say that mostly in Indian Ocean or uh, when we are talking about this coral, as I told you their positioning is 25 north and 25 south ok and most of these corals are found in this particular area. Maximum corals are found in the confluence of the Pacific on one side and the Indian Ocean on the other side ok. So, this area is having a large population of corals and ultimately uh, I would say that nearly you know uh, some six, more than 60 percent corals are found in this particular area ok. So, now that is why this particular area is witnessing bleaching as well. So, Australia that, that is very, uh, Great Barrier Reef then uh, Tanzania, Kenya and this area of Indonesia ok. More than 54 percent of the world's coral reefs uh, area has experienced the bleaching because of the high heat stress ok. So, that is uh, the one thing. Uh, why it is happening? Uh, as I told you there are various reasons uh, to increase in the increase of the ocean temperature. Other than that you must have heard about the El Nino phenomena. El Nino phenomena is known for the warming of the oceans and that is why that is one most uh, other factor uh, because of which that can happen that is El Nino ok. Now, we are seeing that El Nino is suppressing now and there are chances that in some time we will see La Nina ok. So, there are chances that this uh, particular bleaching might you know stop and they will they might go for the uh, you can say recovery ok. Other than that uh, this temperature rise is there because of the greenhouse gases impact here uh, there are rising emissions heat trapping greenhouse gases uh, such as carbon dioxide, methane etc. Nearly 90 percent of the extra heat trapped by the greenhouse gases has absorbed by the has been absorbed by the oceans. So, whatever heat is generated by the greenhouse gases it is being absorbed by the oceans and because of which temperature is increasing and the temperature is basically affecting the coral reefs ok. So, I hope this is clear we can move to the next part. So, this is clear please remember this particular slide because that can be very important ok. So, what causes the coral bleaching the issues are given over here these are the condition in which coral survives and this is the phenomena uh, which is related to corals that is symbiotic relationship with the zoosanthalize ok. So, I hope this is clear now we can move further. Now, how climate change is fueling litigations in India and the world ok. So, recently there was this case which has given uh, a particularly you can say a right which is uh, against the adverse impact of the climate change ok. So, that right has been attached with the or you can say found its source from the article 21 that is right to life and article 14 that is a right to equality ok. Now, you can say that this is also part of right to life in art, under article 21. Now, they have given this particular uh, you can say uh, uh, right, but the thing is do we have such resources to uh, you know uh, fulfill all these uh, you know obligations which has been created by such right, but that is the sad truth is we do not have such kind of resources. So, because of which there can be high degree of litigation in the court ok. And this phenomenon is seen all over the world not only in India and all over the world courts are basically uh, you know taking favor or you can say they are on the side of environment protection which is quite normal because obviously if environment does not survive we will not be able to survive. But the thing is we have to make sure that there should be a balance between the rights which are which we are given uh, giving and then there should be this particular you can say uh, you can say our 
capacity to you know uh, fulfill those obligations okay so because of which this litigation will increase let's see what is happening over here other than that you must have heard about this uh, you know elderly nearly 2000 elderly woman has gone to the court and then uh, they also won the case we will talk about that so coming to the uh, article here an important ruling that uh, court <coughs> that could energize the climate litigation in india Supreme Court on 6th of April said that people have a fundamental right to be free from the adverse impact of the climate change and that uh, this right is flowed naturally from the right to life and right to equality guaranteed under article uh, 21 and 14 of the constitution respectively. Okay? Now people's right to clean air or the clean environment was already uh, recognized as uh, in the Indian jurisprudence. So that was already there. The per se there was no right against the climate. There was there was no right against the climate change. Now that right has also been given. Okay. Now the main matter um, uh, pertain to that particular conservation of the Great Indian Buster. When we are talking about this particular case, that was the case was related to Great Indian Busters. Okay. GIs which are basically found in areas of Rajasthan and Gujarat. Mostly speaking, you can say that the most population of these Great Indian Busters is found in Rajasthan. Okay. And they are um, feeling this thread, uh, threat because of the power lines uh, which are going to that particular area of that their habitat and because of which they are uh, you know having these encounters with these power lines and ultimately they are dying. Okay? That particular case has been gone to the court and wherein they have said that there is this uh, issue uh, between the uh, energy, solar energy, these power lines were uh, the lines which has been uh, generated to transmit the power which has been generated by the windmills over here in Rajasthan. Okay? So, ultimately they said that there should be a balance between uh, the environment and the uh, renewable energy or you can say any kind of efforts which are doing to fight the climate change. Okay? So, both the things were related to climate change over here okay? because the life of great Indian busters that is also been uh, in, in danger because there is a you know limited number of these species which are living right now. Okay? Then there was this issue related to renewable energy because those lines transmission lines are basically from the wind energy. Okay? So, in that particular case there was this reference to the climate change and court has diverted from the topic and they have given this particular observation or you can say comment on in that particular case. Okay? The rise of climate litigation, there is a global surge in the number of people seeking legal remedies for the issue related to climate change. As I told you this trend is being seen world over. A government and the corporate actions on the climate remain woefully inadequate. Okay? So, there are this corporate social responsibility, there, there are other factors as well, but these factors are not up to mark. Okay? When we are talking about our target that is to limit uh, our temperature change uh, less than uh, 1.5 degrees Celsius, but we are not doing much about it. Okay? So, considering all these things, people are going for such a litigation, increasing number of the concerned in individuals and the group and they are fighting for the uh, this particular cause. Okay? UNEP said that uh, they have identified 2180 climate related case being heard by courts, tribunals, other uh, adjudicatory bodies in 65 countries. Okay? So, this much is the amount of litigation with respect to uh, these changes in the climate. Okay? Now, there are that can be uh, seen in the developed countries like uh, United States and Europe, but increasingly you can see such cases in the uh, developing countries as well as uh, you can say uh, in India also we can see such things. Okay? Now, petitioners have invoked the right to life, uh, human rights, right to health, right to environment, right to clean air, all these to press the issues of the climate actions, okay? because earlier there was no uh, you know, uh, right against the climate change, but now since court has given this particular right, so we will see that there can be rise in the litigation. In several cases, court have conquered uh, and given favorable verdicts, most recently a group of elderly Swiss women successfully argued before the European Court of Human Rights that the rights of family life, rights to family life were being violated because adverse uh, effect on the heat waves. Okay? So, basically these elderly uh, 2000 women, they have moved to the court in Switzerland wherein they have warned that uh, there should be a right uh, to family life and that right has been uh, basically violated or you can say impacted by the heat waves. Okay? So, such is the nature of litigations which are happening over there. Okay? 
then lack of enforcement of the existing uh, climate laws or the policies corporations uh, for the liability compensation and greenwashing this term greenwashing can be important okay these two things which are talking about the lack of existing climate law that is there other than that also the corporates are not basically fulfilling their responsibility that is there other than that this there is this greenwashing okay you must have seen that there are various institutions etc which are basically saying that uh, this product is environment friendly this uh, product is eco friendly but there are high chances that uh, that those products are not really eco friendly okay so this is what they are doing they are green washing okay they are putting these lines on the product so that these product can be you know uh, circulated in the market very well but the thing is in reality they are not that okay so they basically are giving a false impression over here okay so that is basically your green washing but while these may bring greater accountability in the government the corporate climate actions it would be too much to expect this verdicts to make any significant dent in the overall threat from the climate change because climate change is not something which a particular judgment can overturn okay so it is a multi uh, ferrous uh, uh, issue uh, for which there are certain things which is required or you can say a collaborative effect uh, uh, you can say effort which is required in that area okay climate litigations in india uh, earlier there was not ma many uh, but whatever environmentalist were there they used to go under various uh, you can say litigations but these litigation per se were not related to climate change okay but now this new trend might be uh, starting uh, when we are talking about these climate related issues uh, there is this national green tribunal which is basically taking care of these issues but now when we see uh, there is this appellant authority with the high court okay or you can say by the special leave they go to the high court so ultimately this matters comes to high court and supreme court okay so that is where you can say that this burden or you can say uh, you know uh, pending lit litigations will increase in the time okay now a recent supreme court decision has done to uh, uh, has done is to reinforce the critical nature of the climate change and would potentially pave way for a new jurisprudence where people socio economic development nature and the climate change are equally prioritized okay so basically they are trying to make a balance this uh, supreme court judgment but the thing is again if litigations are increasing there will be hindrance in various forms okay then effectiveness of the court's ruling is a big question mark because as i told you climate change is not a simple concept which can be solved with respect to one particular ruling okay it is a multifarious issue there are various steps which has to be taken when you are going to a court saying that i have a right to you know uh, right against the adverse effect of the climate change first thing is what you are doing to make sure that you are not being part of this particular uh, issue okay so if you are using a vehicle uh, and uh, there are you know when we are talking about delhi delhi has a lot of vehicles and there is because of which there are issues of emissions because of which there are issues of traffic etc so ultimately we are the one which we are basically doing these issues and because of which we are suffering okay so ultimately these judgments will not make uh, much uh, you know impact because we don't have such kind of revenues okay so ultimately if you want to do something about it we have to collaborate on the issue and then we have to do it this judgment or you can say effective or effectiveness of the judgment is uh, a big question okay so i hope this is clear now now we can move to the next part uh, that is related to your art and architecture uh, okay so we will take this article hold on okay so <coughs> there is this stomp in the when we are talking about this Nizamuddin area, there are various storms. Okay, uh, you must have talked about, uh, you must have seen this Humayu storm. Then there is this Sabdarzang storm. Then there is this, uh, you know, Abdul Rahim Khani Khana, or uh, you know, uh, you can say Rahim storm. Okay, these storms are in, uh, you know, there in that particular area because there is this particular importance which is attached to Hazrat Niz Nizamuddin over there. Okay, so his darga is over there. And in Islam, it is believed that if you are living in the vicinity of you or you can you are if you are buried in the vicinity of a, a saint, okay, so uh, that is auspicious, okay, and because of which you will see that most of the Mughals or most of the uh, you know these tombs are in that particular area, okay. Now, when we are talking about this particular tomb, which has been a lost cause because uh, this was not under the this was not an earlier under the protection of uh, asi and this tomb has uh, was in a position it could have collapsed okay but then asi and then aga khan's trust they have come up forward and then they try to revive it okay so this basically is tomb of your abdur rahim khan khana when we are talking about this person you must have heard about uh, him that is rahim 
you must have heard about rahim ke dohe the couplets etc so this basically is a person he was a uh, uh, navratan in the akbar's court okay so he has a lot of influence he was a commander in chief in the army okay so not just a poet but he was also a fighter he was also, also a diplomat you can say okay when we are talking about his own family you must have heard about the baram khan baram khan basically was the guardian of uh, akbar when he ascended to the throne he was merely of 14 years age so baram khan was the person who has taken care of the empire at that point of time okay and, and later in uh, later in the phases of life uh, he was uh, actually uh, told by akbar to go for uh, makka madina but the thing is this particular person that is baram khan he was so important while he was uh, you know you can say exiled from uh, the uh, empire in meanwhile he was killed by someone okay assassinated by someone and his wife and son were there so akbar recalled them back to uh, you can say uh, uh, the capital and then ultimately they came over here and this person uh, rahim he was given all the education etc and ultimately he has come up as a good diplomat a good commander in chief of her army and obviously we, it is, he is famous for the poet now poetry etc other than that dohas okay now when we are talking about this particular structure this structure was built for his wife okay uh, his wife her name was uh, mahabanu okay so he has made this tomb for her okay but later in life when he died then he was also taken over here and buried uh, besides her okay so that is about uh, this particular history of this particular tomb when we are talking about the condition here you can see uh, this was the tomb earlier before uh, you know aga khan's trust and uh, the archaeological survey of india started their uh, you know you can say uh, renovation of this particular tomb okay so here you can see you can only see the stones okay uh, you cannot see any kind of uh, you know beautified structure over here but it was just ruins which are left okay and they have renovated into this particular structure so now it is looking very beautiful here you can say on the tomb there are only limited marbles okay others are not present okay so the reason behind it was that the this, uh, this particular structure uh, acted as a query for people for the construction over here many people has taken uh, this particular marbles or i would say that even safdarjan tombs uh, when this particular tomb of safdarjan that was made the structure or you can say marbles were pulled out of the dome of this particular structure and then placed over here because at that point of time when safdarjan uh, safdarjan tomb was uh, being made, uh, made the empire's uh, condition was not very good okay or you can say the uh, empire was on the verge of decline so there was no much funds okay so that is why they have taken the material from this particular uh, uh, tomb and they have taken it to the safdarjan okay and they put all those marbles over here you, you can, if you visit those particular area you will see that there is no uh, you can say similarity or particular design the structure okay that was there was this hodgepodge approach which has been taken in uh, in the safdarjan tomb because uh, however they have uh, whatever material they have taken from here they have used it over there okay so that is one thing or you can say that is the cause of uh, decline of this particular monument because the, the you can say uh, marbles or the uh, you know construction material that has been taken from this particular area and used in the safdarjan okay so that is why this tomb was a clear on the verge of collapse but uh, uh, later uh, asi has come forward and they have uh, renovated this particular dome now it is looking very beautiful you, you can visit this particular area okay so there is this book asar al sanadid okay we have talked about this book earlier as well so please remember this because that is the second time they have i have found this mention of this particular book in the last two months okay asar al sanadid this book was written by sir sayed ahmed khan okay so he was also a very famous personality so that is the reason that can be uh, there okay so he has also uh, talked about this particular book uh, sorry this particular monument so you can go through this okay so i hope this is clear uh, this is about this particular monument in 1920 archaeological survey of india they have took this particular monument under, under their control and they have gone for the revival of this particular monument okay so i hope this is clear okay and uh, one more fact over here that it has been you know part of adopt a heritage adopt a heritage scheme by ministry uh, of uh, you can say tourism ministry wherein uh, some corporate uh, companies sector they adopt a particular monument and they go for the spending money over there or you can say they act as a monument mitra okay so that is about this particular article now moving ahead this i have already told you 
then there was this issue of iran israel issue uh, i have already talked about this particular thing that there was this particular attack which has been done by uh, you know someone on the uh, irani embassy in the syria ultimately to retaliate or you can say iran has the uh, assumed that this attack was from the israel side israel has not taken the responsibility they have gone for the retaliations they have fired nearly 300 missiles Earlier, Israel said that they will not reciprocate right now, but the, when the right, uh, you know, time is right, they will go for it. And Israel has gone for the attack on the Friday. Okay, so they have gone for this attack, uh, and this attack was launched from Israel in this particular area uh, that is Isfah, Isfahan. Okay, so in Ira Iran, Isfahan, this site is quite important because that is, uh, you know, a military base as well as, uh, you know, a site of nuclear. Uh, uh, settlements over here okay so that is why they have gone for this particular site okay so let's come and see the israeli military struck on iran on early early on the friday israel's first military response to iran's attack last weekend but whose scope at least initially appeared to be limited iranian officials said that the strike had hit a military air base near the city of isfahan in central iran initial reactions from the both sides was muted okay uh, with the news media in the both countries appeared to play down the attack in uh, what analysis uh, analyst said what uh, was a sign that the rivals were seeking to de-escalate the tensions okay uh, so all these things are fine but the thing is remember that they have gone for an attack now the situation in the middle east are even worse okay iranian news agencies reported that the nuclear facility in isfahan has not been hit okay but the thing is there are nuclear facilities in that particular area please go through this particular map that can be important for you okay uh, Iranian officials said that the attack on the Friday was carried out by small drones possibly launched from the inside of the Iran. Okay, So, that is one thing. We have already talked about this particular thing. Okay? Palestinian bid to get full UN membership. There was this uh, resolution wherein uh, members uh, wanted to include uh, Palestine as a full-fledged member, but USA has vetoed that. So, that is another thing which we have already discussed. Now, we can move further here. Because of this particular thing, what will happen to the oil prices? Uh, as I told you, <coughs> sir, what time this class goes live every day? So, this is uh, mostly 10.30 is the time, but because of certain uh, thing, if there is a delay, that ca there can be a delay of 5 minutes, 7 minutes, because uh, internet sometimes act uh, weird. So, that is the thing. Okay. So, 10.30 is the time. Uh, in the thumbnail also, we have the timestamp. Okay. So, oil and the uh, LNG prices, we have talked about the oil very much when because uh, this state of Hormuz is very important for us and because of uh, you know mostly the oil from the Saudi Arabia, uh, Iran, all these are, uh, oil are coming from this particular area of uh, you can say state of Hormuz for India uh, for the other uh, Asia, uh, Asian countries. Okay, Because of this particular activity, if Iran goes for the seize of this particular uh, you know state of Hormuz, there can be certain uh, issues with respect to the price with respect to the supply but when we are talking about indian oil most of uh, which is coming from russia so supply side is fine but then when we are talking about this lng so for lng there are some issues because most of the lng or you can say lngs are coming from this particular area only okay so that is why the prices of oil might increase the prices of lng that might also increase india is a country which is uh, you know a third largest consumer of oil uh, 85 percent of the demands are basically uh, you know met with the imports so that is why it is important for us uh, that oil prices are minimum otherwise that will impact the forex reserve that will impact the inflation situation in country so that will uh, that can be very detrimental for our own economy okay oil and lng prices are likely to shoot up if iran is to block state of hormuz through which countries uh, like india uh, imports crude from saudi arabia iraq uae okay Iran and Israel conflict has accelerated over few years, which we have uh, few days, which we have already seen. Right now, the prices are nearly ninety uh, dollars per barrel. Okay, the state of Hormuz is the area from which nearly twenty one percent of the uh, trade has been passing from that particular area. So that is why it, uh, it becomes very much important uh, when we are talking about the location of state of Hormuz. Uh, I hope that picture. Huh, okay, so here somewhere there, this is the Persian Gulf. Okay, so somewhere here. There is this uh, particular place. Uh, I forgot to include the map, so please go ahead and you can watch this particular map uh, from the internet. Okay, so when we are talking about the state of Hormuz, it is basically connecting the Persian Gulf and the Arabian Ocean. Okay, Arabian Sea. 
other than that all these things we have already discussed that how much oil is coming from the which particular area our needs are being fulfilled from the russian oil other than that or we are also considering venezuela as an option so supply side might not be uh, hindered but the thing is prices may increase okay because of the escalation in that particular area you know that red sea area is already been in the trouble because of the houthi rebels so the premiums might increase insurance premium might increase and ultimately that will increase the uh, you can say prices of the oil and when we are talking about the lng lng uh, when we are talking about india india is importing L lngs from qatar so please remember that so now that can also be hindered okay so that is the thing india which is uh, which is more than 85% dependent on the overseas supplies to meet crude oil needs import oil from saudi arabia iraq and uae as well as liquefied natural gas from the qatar through strait of hormuz okay saudi arabia has uh, this east west pipeline so that pipeline will also get impacted because this is also about the lng okay however the pipeline opens up in the red sea where traffic uh, flow has already been disrupted by the houthi rebels okay we, we have already discussed however india still has a decent supply of russian crude oils uh, comprising 30 percent of the india's total import by its financial year 2024 and it should help to keep India's import bills for the crude under check. Okay, so that is thing because Russia is offering us a uh, huge discount. Okay, then escalation of the tension in the Middle East poses a significant threat to Asia Pacific economies. The key risk comes from the high oil prices derailing uh, the reason already chopping for progress for the inflation. So ultimately that will target the inflation in their particular region. Most Asia Pacific economies net oil importers, they are net oil importers because obviously when we are talking about the South Asia, Southeastern Asia, uh, there are less uh, you know possibility of finding oil over here. So mostly oil is imported from that particular area and that is why they are dependent on the oil. Okay. Now for your own read there is this article which is related to the indelible ink okay whenever you go for an election and you put uh, cast your vote they will put a sign or you can say ink on your uh, you know uh, index finger so that is basically your sign this particular ink is made of uh, you know particular chemical that is your <coughs> uh, that is made of your uh, hold on a second i'm forgetting the name <coughs> silver nitrate okay sorry silver nitrate so they are having this silver nitrate and silver nitrate has this uh, particular uh, you can say uh, characteristics uh, which is uh, which makes this particular ink permanent for 72 hours at least okay so uh, it was to eliminate the false or you can say uh, fraud in the you know elections wherein one candidate can go and put vote again and again so that was the issue and that is why they have come up with this idea of uh, you know putting in uh, deniable ink on ink on this uh, finger index finger okay so silver nitrate is been used and to dry it instantly we, they are using alcohol okay so i hope you will go and find what are the uh, you can say applications of silver nitrate not only in the ink but otherwise also because if they are asking you they will give you you can say four or five options okay so they can give you other applications as well so go and read about silver nitrate and go and read this article as well okay now we can move to the last part that is your practice question okay okay which of the following countries does not have a coastline along the strait of hormuz as i told you please go and uh, watch that particular map and then you will be able to answer this question that is oman uae iran and jordan okay so please attempt this question answer in the comment box as i already told you uh, that uh, this is the last day to avail the offer uh, of civil services day and we are providing you 40 percent discount on our uh, online courses pen drive courses test series and the uh, distance learning program so you can go and avail that particular offer with that, I would like to wrap this uh, session. Uh, if you have not subscribed the channel, please subscribe the channel. Thank you.